Like and subscribe and click the bell icon to get new video updates. Donda Replay, Kanai Tai's new album exclusively to stem player device Kanai West's new album, Donda 2, is due to be released on the 22nd of February, but it will not be released on traditional streaming services. Instead it will only be available on the stem player device he released in conjunction with the Donda album in August 2021. Donda 2 will only be available on my own platform, the Stem Player, he wrote on his official Instagram account. Not on Apple, Amazon, Spotify or YouTube. He proposed this as largely a protest against the traditional streaming revenue model which, he believes, greatly disadvantages musicians and songwriters. Today artists get just 12% of the money the industry makes, he said. It's time to free music from this oppressive system. It's time to take control and build our own. West directed people to the official STEM player site if they wished to order the album. The device retails for $200. STEM player is effectively a music service rolled into a portable circular device that looks a bit like a Google Home smart speaker crossed with a hockey puck. The STEM player landing page is also replicated on the home page of West's own website. The twist with the player is that it lets users interact with the tracks as they play them, with four channels that can turn up or down different parts of the track, using the stems, to get the particular sound they want. This all has echoes of trends from the early 2000s when acts would release stems of tracks and offer them out to fans usually as part of a remix competition, with Radiohead being one of the biggest acts to experiment here several times. There was also a brief flurry of activity around browser-based interactive remixing, presenting it as a new type of musical format, with MXP4 being one of the better-known examples. That said, this was, by definition, an incredibly niche activity and was never going to be a dominant way of consuming music. It was fine for a competition or a piece of interactive fan marketing, but it was never going to travel far outside of that. This makes the moves here by West all the more intriguing. He is positioning STEM player as being about artist empowerment over and above fan interactivity. In that sense, the ghost of Neil Young's Pono player raises its head. What was a phenomenal success initially as a Kickstarter project back in 2014, raising over $6 million in pledges to get it off the ground, seemed to steadily run out of steam thereafter. Artist empowerment was a happy byproduct of Pono's central idea, but Young was really selling it as being about enhanced sonics for the listener. At the time, this audiophile strategy was swimming against the general tide of streaming which was more about convenience than sound. Now, however, multiple services are offering high-resolution streaming as standard. West's claim about STEM player paying artists better and musicians wrestling back control from the established streaming services is as invigorating as it is vague. His claim that artists get just 12% of the money the industry makes in streaming is simply too opaque to be really helpful. Artists' streaming royalty rates will differ enormously depending on the deal they have with their record label, if that deal has been renegotiated, if they are recouped or not and labels are moving to change the recoupment imbalance, if they are on a major or an independent label, if they are self-releasing, if they are using a label services company and so on. There is no uniform royalty rate for artists in the streaming world, just as there was no uniform deal in the days of CDs and LPs. His statement could also be a subtle disaimed at title. This was the relaunch name of niche Scandinavia streaming service Wimp when Project Panther Bidco, fronted by JZ, acquired it in 2015 for $54 million. Major names like Beyonce, Rihanna, Daft Punk, Madonna, Dead May 5, Jack White and West himself were given stakes in the service and it was presented as an artist-owned vehicle that would pay higher streaming rates. Many of these marquee artists offered up exclusives, notably Beyonce's Lemonade album and West's own Life of Pablo album. This was a release he returned to and reworked several times by adding and subtracting tracks, meaning it existed in a constant state of flux for listeners. Despite the high-profile names and incredible levels of media hype, Tidal did not become the blockbuster service it was aspiring to be. 
Jay-Z eventually broke his own exclusives rule and returned his music to Spotify in 2019. West was even quicker to end his title exclusive, releasing The Life of Pablo on multiple streaming services in April 2016. Jay-Z's interest in title appeared to wane, eventually selling a majority stake to Square, the mobile payment company set up by Twitter co-founder Jack Dorsey, in March 2021 for $297 million. Perhaps Dem Player is.